This is Democracy Watch. So, Mark, we've got some surprising, albeit not so great news out of Louisiana. Uh, we've been counting on a second majority black district in that state. Can you explain what just happened in an appeals court? Yeah, first of all, don't give up hope. I still think we're going to get a second Louisiana uh, uh, majority black district, and we can talk about that more. But in a in really a highly, highly unusual move, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals granted what's called a writ of mandamus, which is an order from the Court of Appeals to the trial judge to essentially cancel the remedial hearing. Now, that's crazy because mandamus is usually used when you have, you know, some official a judge or someone else doing something, you know, sort of crazy and you need to stop them. Usually the way this should work is if 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 the state of Louisiana believes that uh, there shouldn't be a remedial hearing, they appeal and the case goes up as an appeal. But this was an extraordinary measure by the Fifth Circuit granting this writ of mandamus. Uh, and that's what happened. Well, the obvious question here, can and will this decision be appealed to the Supreme Court? Yeah, so I have some breaking news for you literally first here uh, that uh, uh, earlier today, uh, my law firm uh, filed an emergency application in the U.S. Supreme Court uh, to, to block this, to stay this mandamus uh, and send this case back on its ordinary track. So that has been that has been filed in the Supreme Court. Uh, it goes first uh, to Justice Alito, who is the circuit judge for uh for the Fifth Circuit. He will almost certainly, as is customary practice, refer it to the full court. Uh, there'll be some briefing and then uh, hopefully we'll get uh, we'll get action uh, uh, pretty quickly. Well, is there any reason that the Supreme Court would, would rule in any way differently than how it ruled in what is effectively an identical case in Alabama, that's, that's uh, Allen versus Milligan, where the Supreme Court ordered Alabama to draw a second majority black district? Yeah, I actually think the arguments here are much stronger than they were in Alabama for for two reasons. The first is that remember the the when the Supreme Court ruled in Allen v. Milligan, the Louisiana case was or was also before the Supreme Court. Supreme Court sent the 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 Louisiana case back to the trial court intentionally to to have further proceedings consistent with its ruling in Alabama. But the second, and so that's the reason why they wouldn't rule any differently to answer your question. But the reason why I think the facts here are stronger is the procedural mechanism here. The, the idea that an appellate court would halt would halt a proceeding at the trial court, not reverse it, not let it happen and then reverse it, but literally halt it from happening is an extraordinary act action and I think is on much, much weaker footing than even Alabama was on. Is this a scenario where if they introduced or if they employed the use of a writ of mandamus to halt that action from the lower court, the trial court, that the Supreme Court, that they could introduce a writ of mandamus to the Supreme Court to halt what the appeals court did? So we're not asking for a writ of mandamus. We're just asking to essentially block the writ of mandamus from preventing this hearing from going forward, right? This is all this is all about a remedial hearing and whether or not this remedial hearing will take place. And so we're just saying to the Supreme Court, you need to you need to block this mandamus action, this which halts it from being in effect, and um, uh, and then let that hearing go forward. And then, frankly, if Louisiana loses and wants to appeal in the way that 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 um, Alabama did, they'll be free to. Now, as you point out, uh, the Supreme Court has now heard and heard and heard and heard uh, those appeals to no effect, which is presumably why they tried this other mechanism, uh, because I, I assume they know that that they're that they're they won't win on appeal. Does this introduce any likelihood that Louisiana's maps may not be fixed in time for the 2024 election, that we may not see uh, for any reason a second majority black district? Look, it, it it may feel like this has been going on a long time, and this is late. It's it's only it's still September uh, of of the off year, so we have time, right? The, the 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 process that was that we are on the cusp of having happen in Louisiana is the remedial process, the process of putting in place a new map. So there's not a lot that has to happen. I suspect we're, this is not the last time we will have these kinds of like emergency things because we saw it with Alabama, right? We saw Alabama thrash around in the courts uh, to try to do everything it could to prevent it from happening. But if you look at it from a time standpoint, uh, Brian, it didn't actually go span that much time. 
You know, it was a lot of activity, but it didn't take a long time. So I suspect in Louisiana, the same is going to happen here. And we will, this will all be sorted out. My guess is, oh, you know, by the end of October, this will all be in the rearview mirror. Okay. Just a, a, a technical question here, a procedural question, I guess. Can the plaintiffs in this case request a trial in front of the full Fifth Circuit since this decision was only handed down by a three-judge panel? Yeah, so, I mean, you can always seek what's called en banc review, which means the entire court. So it's always available to say, I don't like the three-judge panel, that I don't like their decision, I want to go, I want all the judges to rule on it. The problem with that is that takes a lot of time. Right. Because think about it like they have to then ask all those judges, do you want to hear this case? And then those judges may say yes or no, but they're corralling a lot of judges. Right. One of the reasons why they have three judge panels is it's easier for three judges to rule than to get the entire court together. So um, that's not really an option here. I also think it's pretty clear that 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 um, that the plaintiffs here, um, you know, my partners who are bringing this case, I'm sort of a bystander, but but but, you know, it's my firm. Um, but I think that their thought process is probably that they can go to the Supreme Court, get much quicker relief. OK, now on the judges for a moment who handed down uh, this decision, given how the Supreme Court ruled in Allen versus Milligan, which, again, is a nearly identical case. Doesn't this decision by these right wing circuit court judges, there's two in particular, a Trump appointee and I believe a George W. Bush appointee, doesn't it reek of illegality or at least impropriety? Look, I wouldn't say it's illegal or improper. There's no question that the two that the two judges in the majority here are two of the most conservative judges in the federal judiciary. You know, J uh, Judge Jones has been around for a very long time. She has been on the short list of the Federalist Society. She was on the short list for Leonard Leo's list for Donald Trump. She was on the short list before that. Judge Ho is, as you point out, a more recent appointee of Donald Trump. Both of them are very, very conservative um, on a range of issues. So I'm not going to say it's improper or any, I think they got the law wrong. I think the Supreme Court will correct it, hopefully. Uh, and But that's really as far as I'd go there. So what is what are next steps in this case? What can we expect next here as far as Louisiana? So look, I, I think every, everyone, you know, I, I I don't usually directly plug Democracy Docket, but everyone really needs to follow Democracy Docket and subscribe to Democracy Docket because there's going to be fast moving litigation here. And when things happen, it will be the forum that will have that information, have analysis, have the pleadings, have tell you what's happened probably faster than than anyone else. It usually is faster than anyone else uh, for these breaking democracy um, news. So, but I think we're going to have, you know, the, the over the weekend, next week, back and forth with briefs, and we'll have a pretty quick decision. Good. And, and for those watching right now, if you want to uh, check out Democracy's Docket, I'll put the link right here on the screen. So just uh, click the embedded link right here on the screen and you can subscribe that way. It is uh, the best. I mean, it's what I use literally to follow all of this stuff. So it's the best outlet that you're going to find for everything voting in elections. Um, Mark, let's finish off with this. And this is something that I, I think both of us like to do uh, for all of these cases that re that involve um, maps and, and redrawing our maps. Can you give just a quick rundown of what we're looking at in terms of new maps uh, for 2024 or, or new districts within those maps for 2024? Yeah, so look, we now know we're getting the new district in Alabama, right? That the state of Alabama, you know, the AG there sort of threw a bit of a temper tantrum in his press release, being like, fine, fine, we'll have the new map for 2024, but that doesn't mean we were wrong. And yeah, it doesn't like, mean we'll like, keep, we, won't we won't like it. We don't know we won't like it, right? So Alabama is basically done. We're waiting on the court to choose among three maps drawn by the special master. All of them would create a, a second black opportunity district. Louisiana, we just talked about. Um, Georgia, we're, I expect we'll get a ruling from the Georgia trial judge in uh, in late-ish October, maybe early-ish November. And I, and based on all the body language there, again, another case, my other partners, my firm, my firm's trying that case. I think that that we're going to get an additional um, uh, Black Opportunity District in the Atlanta area there. Florida, we've talked about before. Uh, trial judge, um, again, you know, I don't read too much into the who appointed them, but this was a judge appointed by former Governor Rick Scott, not a, you know, a liberal judge. Um, he ruled that the Florida map was, was illegal. Uh, and so that case is now up on appeal. I expect that to get resolved. 
Uh, and then, you know, all eyes from there turn to New York. And New York has a really, really big redistricting case. My par partner, Arya Branch, has argued that is going to argue that case. Um, and it is going to be over whether or not the Independent Redistricting Commission, the bipartisan commission in that state, gets an opportunity to draw a new fair map for 2024. If they do, it probably means another four or five seats for Democrats. That's because not that's not because of partisanship. That's just because that's what fairness would look like in the state of New York, as opposed to the map we currently have, which was drawn by a special master hired by a very conservative Republican judge from a rural area of New York. So I think that's probably the biggest case right now I would be following. And again, you can follow that on democracy. And beyond those, I believe we also have South Carolina and then looking into perhaps this cycle, but maybe next cycle is also uh, some Texas seats as well. So, uh, yeah. So let me not, let me, let me not sleep on South Carolina. South Carolina is going to be argued before the U S Supreme court. That's going to be a big hearing. That's a racial gerrymandering case. And that would also add an additional uh, black, uh, likely black opportunity district, Nancy Mace's district, which is the, was gerrymandered to keep black voters out is what's at issue there. So that's a really important case, both because it's a seat in South Carolina, but also because it's a Supreme court case. And you're absolutely right on Texas, Texas. I didn't mean to skip it over. Texas is also a state where you could be talking about four, five seats. Uh, and that's a, that's a case that is sort of modeled like the, the Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, and part of the South Carolina case. Uh, and so that is a possibility for this, uh, for this, uh, for 2024. But I think that's going to be harder from a timing standpoint. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. Um, again, as as you mentioned, uh, your your firm is litigating cases in Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia. So uh, for anybody who wants to support Florida, Mark, and New York. And New York. Yeah, of course. And Texas. <laughs> and Texas. So for anybody who wants to support Mark and his team in this desperately needed work, uh, the best way to support them is to sign up for Democracy Docket. Again, it's that news outlet focused on everything voting and elections. I'll put the link right here on the screen. It's also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Taylor Cohen. I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch. Democracy Watch.